I begin today's Sant Mat Satsang podcast with a reading from the poetry of Kabir from the book Engoldment, A Year with Kabir, translated by Andrew Harvey, who did the Rumi poetry book a while back. He has one now on Kabir. Some claim they know a lot. Some claim they've given up everything. Some claim they've mastered their senses. The virus of ego sickens them all. Some claim they're yogis. Some claim they revel in inner bliss. But still me and mine, and you and yours, race like rats around their mind. Some say they give generously. Some say they do brutal penance. Neither know the truth, neither know the name. Both will be gobbled by illusion. Some claim they're adepts of many methods. Some claim they pursue a life of purity. They know nothing of their soul. Their claims are empty. Some say they've done a thousand devotions. Some say they've practiced every ritual fast. Their ego knot has not been untied. They only heap more karmas on their head. Drive out pride, friend. Destroy the ego. Never be vain about learning or devotion. Kabir says, the one who becomes a slave of the one reaches his real home. And from another poem, another mystic poem of Guru Kabir. The swan will fly away alone. What a sight, the circus of this world. A leaf falls from a tree. Hard for them to meet again. Who knows where it will go? Blown on by the wind. Verses from Kabir, from a new translation, Engoldment, A Year with Kabir, translated by Andrew Harvey. Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang Podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today's program is titled, God is the Creator of the Spiritual Path. God is the source of the inward journey of love, light, and and sound. God is the creator of the light and sound within. This is a passage from the book Eugnostos the Blessed from the Nag Hammadi Library. No doubt authored in Alexandria, Egypt, long ago. Eugnostos, the blessed, to those who are his. Rejoice in this that you know. Greetings, I want you to know that all born from the foundation of the world until now are dust. While they have inquired about God, who he is, and what he is, what he is like, they have not found him. The wisest among them have speculated about the truth from the ordering of the world, and the speculation has not reached truth. For the ordering is spoken of in three differing opinions by all the philosophers. Hence, they do not agree. For some of them say about the world that it was directed by itself, others that it is providence that directs it others that it is fate. But it is none of these. Again, of the three voices that I have just mentioned, none is true. For whatever is from itself is an empty life, is self-made. Providence is foolish. Fate is an undiscerning thing. Whoever then is able to get free of these three voices I have just mentioned 
and come by means of another voice to confess the God of truth, he is immortal, dwelling in the midst of mortal men, Eugnostus the Blessed. From Swamiji Maharaj, the teachings of Swamiji Maharaj, a synopsis of those authored actually by Huzur Maharaj by Salagram Bahadur, in the book Sarbachan Radhaswami Prose, book one, at the very start, the very beginning, the opening verse, reminds me a bit of Eugnostos the Blessed, speaking of the philosophies of the material plane and an alternative to those coming from beyond. This world is perishable, and so also is all that pertains to it. A wise man is he who, having closely examined the nature of existence here, has realized that it is all transitory and illusory, and consecrated this life, his human form, by devoting himself to bhajan and simran, listening to the inner sound during meditation practice and the repetition of the holy name of the Supreme Being, and who, taking the fullest advantage of the various faculties which the Supreme Father has graciously endowed him with, has translated the invaluable jewel within him which is surat, or the essence of his being, to its original abode. A note about surat, or soul. Surat is a soul drop from the divine ocean, the supreme being, Radhaswami, Anami. When the surat, soul, assumes body and form, it becomes known as jiva, a soul entity, or jiv atma. So we find here, in this paragraph, an appeal to make use of this golden opportunity of life and living to make spiritual progress, to take advantage of the jewel of the soul to focus on the development, the realization of the soul through spiritual practice and don't let this opportunity go to waste. Something similar here from Swami Vyasanand from the book The Inward Journey of the Soul. Since the beginning of creation, every living soul in this transient world has been going through various afflictions each soul imprisoned by the darkness of ignorance within the nine-gated body. The body has nine orifices, therefore it is known as the nine-gated body. The soul endures the cycles of death and rebirth. The captive soul experiences these kinds of suffering, physical, mental, and countless afflictions caused by natural forces and subtle inner passions. The soul is consumed by the conflagration of the desires of the five senses. It is trampled by the mind that is livid like an elephant in rut. Distractions such as greed, lust, attachment haunt the soul. They are like robbers that deprive the soul of its peace. Sadly, in spite of being a child of God, the soul thinks of itself as a slave of the senses and sense organs, and is lost in the quagmire of sensory desires and temptations. In such conditions, the soul is very frantic and, and searches for truth and tranquility. Having witnessed this state of humanity, the saints say, O oh, soul swan, return to your home, return to your divine abode, 
realization of the divine within, where the infinite sea of tranquility and joy is brimming, there you will attain eternal joy. There you will find rest. Swami Vyasanand from The Inward Journey of the Soul, his only book that has been translated into English thus far. God is the creator of the spiritual path. It was not invented by any sect, is not copywritten by anyone in particular. The inner light and sound are not copywritten, not a sectarian thing, but have origin with the divine as well. A verse from the Sarbachan poetry of Swamiji Maharaj. The Master says all the world is blind. No one grasps the secret of the inner way. Commentary by Baba Somanath, the great successor and disciple and devotee of Huzur Baba Sawan Singh, who created all of this beautiful poetry and hymns and satsang discourses a few years ago. They started to be translated into English and put online at a website. And all of a sudden, now we have access to the teachings of Baba Somanath, and I'm very happy that we do. Commentary on that verse of poetry by Swamiji by Baba Somanath. This is the hem of Paramsant Satguru Hazur Swamiji. He says that all the world is blind. Why? In the beginning, the Almighty Lord put the path to meet him within us, and then he sent us into this world. And if that inner eye opens, then we will reunite with the Supreme Lord. But through millions of yugas or epochs of time and incarnations, we have remained extroverted. Lord Call, the negative power, the Lord of time has placed the curtain of mind and maya or illusion over the soul and has cast it into the outer world. And becoming extroverted, the soul is always rushing forward, never looking back to realize the true home that it left so long ago. So long ago, so long ago. Some commentary by Baba Somanath, courtesy of the Baba Somanath website. God is the creator of the spiritual path and the inward journey of love, light, and sound. A Satsang Discourse by Parmesan Baba Devi Sahib of Moradabad who was a devotee of Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Unlike other worship methods popular in religions and sects with different names, these two methods are not man-made. God himself is the founder and operator of these methods. Since the beginning, God has kept these two methods inside human beings with full qualifications. The way of redemption of jivas, bounded souls, is available within all human beings. Unless the jiva walks along this way, it can't achieve salvation, the real and ultimate goal of the path. There are two types of dharma, or approaches to religion and spirituality in the world. They are first udhar, and second Nakhad. Udhar Dharma is that in which it is said one attains salvation after death. That sounds very conventional religion 101, doesn't it? Salvation after death. By and by, pie in the sky. Maybe theoretically, theologically, but not experientially. 
And Nakad Dharma is that in which the state of salvation is believed to be experienced or attained during this life. That's the way of the Gnostics, the mystics, the lovers of the beloved, those gypsy souls that want that heaven here now. Baba Devi Sahib, people keep thinking and living on borrowed dharma. Some are involved in rituals and outward devotions, while others are pretending to have become divine themselves. They are unaware of the natural screens or veils of darkness, lights, and sounds between jiva souls and God. God is veiled by five different bodies and subtle bodies, each one inside the other, physical, astral, causal, mental, and etheric. These are veils which can't be transcended by merely reading some mantras or performing yagna or outward devotions or rituals. For them to be shed, you will surely have to be oriented towards going within. Perform dristi sadhana, meditation of inner sight, inner light, and shabda sadhana, meditation on inner sound, inner hearing, transcendental hearing, which will make it possible for your consciousness to travel along the solitary inward path, crossing the natural and supernatural realms to reach such an auspicious place from where your soul would never become detached again to return back to the outer world. But no one can really know of and practice these processes by simply reading scriptures. First of all, the screen of darkness can be accessed by closing your eyes. Secondly, the screen or veil of light can be experienced by crossing the darkness. Thirdly, the veil of sounds can be known by listening to them. Fourthly, not so much a screen or veil, but there is a mystery which cannot be understood like the first, second, and third. It can only be experienced by perfect practice. Here he speaks of the soundless state beyond the light and sound. The soundless the nameless or anami. Baba Devi Sahib, according to Santmat, the path of the masters, having crossed these realms or levels, we achieve the final goal called mukti, i.e. salvation. To attain liberation or salvation, Santmat does not follow numerous complicated practices, but two essential methods. Dristi Marg, the path of inner light, inner vision, and two, Shabad Marg, the way of inner sound, transcendental hearing. Baba Devi Sahib on the inner sound inner hearing, Nada Yoga, Surat Shabd Yoga. The other music or sound is internal and the way to listen to that is by focusing our attention on the internal Shabda or sound that is ringing within each one of us. Sound, internal sound, is a highly precious wealth in the life of every human being. So long as the sound is present in a man, he is alive. As soon as the sound exits, it is the end of him. Thus the difference between a corpse and a living man is that while a man is alive, he walks and speaks, and when the sound leaves him, he is able to neither walk nor talk. The cycle of life is the result of the inspiration of sound only, divine sound. Within there are three compartments apart from the natural physical part, namely shabda or sound, prakash or light, 
and darkness. The waves or vibrations of sound permeate the whole of the body through light, darkness, the brain and the tiny blood vessels, arteries and veins, in that order. It exists in the body in the form of vitality or life current. It exists in the mental sky in the form of light, while it exists as sound in the void. This sound is an immensely valuable entity. In ancient times, Greeks, Egyptians, Romans, and Hindus had authored several books on sound. That is why I say that it is the highest duty of every individual to acquire experiential knowledge of this sound and to investigate or explore the origin or source from where this sound flows out. Sages and saints or saints adopt the straight and simple way of living and teach us to meditate with surat, concentrated or focused, alert, attention, the attention faculty of the soul, surat. This meditation can be practiced in any posture, sitting or reclining, and by anyone, whether a follower of Vedic religion, Islam, or Christianity. What is important is not to live a single day in life without practicing meditation. All the experiences of pains and pleasures of the world one has to go through notwithstanding. Do not live even a single day without inner meditation. The loftiest or the highest outcome of adopting and following the ways of these saints is that it takes one beyond the repetitive cycles of birth and death. That was a discourse by Baba Devi Sahib. God is the creator of the spiritual path. God is the creator of the inward journey of love, light, and sound. God is the source of the light and the sound. Maharishi Mehi's hymn to his Satguru Baba Devi Sahib from the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Paramahans. Guru Baba Sahib propagated the secrets of Santmat. We were all marching ahead in darkness, not being acquainted with the inner secrets of Santmat. Guru Baba Sahib explained to us all about these secrets. Mehi says that these secrets of the saints lay concealed under various externalities and illusions. Due to Devi Sahib's grace, all of these were fully revealed. Maharishi Mehi always praises Baba Sahib, his guru, time and time again. And that's true of all of us, you know. Uh, before initiation, all of these secrets are veiled to us the practices of meditation. We may speculate, have conjecture, or might be misled by other voices who also do not know and do not experience. But after initiation, you know, we are revealed by a living master. What's revealed to us are the secrets of spiritual practice, of meditation practice. And if our initiation is by a competent, qualified teacher, who experiences these things for themselves, then they help facilitate our experience of the inner light and sound as well. It's not just about the theory, but the experience of, of the inner light and sound in meditation. Resting in the Holy Sound Current by Hazura Baba Sawan Singh. Please devote some time daily without fail to sound practice and repetition as this is the only fruit of our life which we will take with us on leaving this world, whereas even the kingships of this earth shall have to be abandoned when death overtakes us. Therefore, it is necessary that we should add to our spiritual wealth, which is the only thing to help us at the time of departing. And the only way to increase our spiritual power is by means of sound practice and repetition. The greater our love for holy sound, 
the greater will be our peace of mind and spiritual progress. As far as possible, we should try to make the focus above the eyes in the brain, our resting place. He speaks here of the third eye center being our place to be, to go to, to spend time at. Hazur Baba Sawan saying, Just as a man weary with the day's work resorts to his home to take rest, so we habituate our soul on being tired with worldly work to take rest in the holy sound. The attention has to be brought inside, and when it likes to rest there, like the wanderer coming home, it will find peace within Azur Baba Sawan Singh. This is from Swami Akutanand Baba from his book, Yoga of Inner Light and Sound, from the only book of his that has been translated into English from Hindi. Since this quintessential vibration or sound springs forth directly from God, it is imbued with the qualities of God and it bestows its own qualities upon its perceiver also and has a natural propensity to attract its perceiver, the soul or surat, to its source, thereby affecting the complete merger of the soul into the supreme soul that is God. That is why meditation on the inner sound has been reckoned by sages and scriptures to be the loftiest of all forms of meditation. Swami Akutanand Baba from the Yoga of Inner Light and sound. And that is true. Nad Bindu Upanishad, you know, nothing, nothing new under the sun. Inner sound meditation has been taught for thousands of years and is found in all kinds of different places. World scriptures, Book of Enoch, Quran, Book of Genesis, in the beginning was the sound, in the beginning was the voice of God doing the creating. So that divine sound is the power behind everything. Nullifying karma and lowering the influences of negative negative powers through the positive power. Saints show us the way. This is from... Hazur Baba Sawan Singh from Spiritual Gems, a collection of letters to initiates. Nullifying karma, canceling out the negative influences which are legion in this realm through a higher power, a hidden power, the positive power. Saints put the individual spirit in touch with the sound current. And as the spirit catches it, it rises up. It throws off the influences of mind and matter. Isn't it great? Something can. Huzur Baba Sawan Singh throws off the influences of mind and matter and gets stronger and stronger. The more the individual works on these lines, the easier the path for him. Otherwise, the course becomes lengthy, but the saints are pledged to see him through after they have initiated a soul. The practice of the sound current cuts the rest of karma. The current acts like a magnet on the spirit. It attracts the spirit to itself, and if the spirit were not covered by the rust of mind and matter, it would go up like a shot. The rust of attachments and impressions is removed by repetition or simran, the repetition of the names. The repetition of thoughts of the journey within replaces our everyday thoughts. Then the mind, instead of wandering outside, begins to take rest and peace within. And when it goes in, the spirit also goes with it. And when the spirit is in, the current, in its turn, pulls it up. Once Trikuti, the three worlds, has been traversed, this will only be when all the karmic accounts are settled. The soul never goes back into transmigration. It will go up further to merge in its origin. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh.
There is the soundless, nameless, wordless state beyond all forms, all lights and sounds. In the past on this podcast, I have shared about the teachings of the soundless God beyond all lights and sounds from the teachings of Maharishi Mehi, Paramahan, Swamiji Maharaj, Swami Sant Seviji, and other saints of the past. This is on this theme of the soundless or the, the God beyond light and sound. This time from Sant Kripal Singh. This is from a Q&A session of his called Mind is a Thief in the Form of a Friend. The saint, or sant, is one who reaches Satnam, the true home of the father, or true father, you might say. There is also the param sant, who transcends even those three higher planes and becomes one with the wordless. These are the stages. There are many people belonging to, to the first stage, some to the second or third of Sat Khan. There are few, really, that have transcended beyond the three. Those who are regularly in the fourth plane, or fourth level of Sachkhand, are called Sants. The true plane of Sachkhand, whatever it is called, is the stage of full effulgence of the wordless God into expression. And in the furthest stages, there is absorption. Alak, Agam, Anami, Swami, Radha Swami, or Nirala, or Maha Dayal, great compassion, or whatever they are called. That is the stage of the highest, termed Paramsant. The satsang path, that is, you might say, of the Paramsant. So that's the difference. I've said that Satnam is the full expression of the wordless state of God. He is fully expressed. In the higher planes, the soul goes on being absorbed until it comes to the wordless state where there's no light nor sound. Those are above stages. Ultimately, in the wordless stage, there's no expression of light or sound. That comes only when it comes into expression. There are different divisions, you might say, of such khand, alak, agam, and the ultimate wordless state that is called the Nameless One, Maha, Dayal, Radhaswami, and by so many other names. I thought I'd share this paragraph from Kripal Singh because it defines the highest level, the ultimate reality stage, the top plane, according to the teachings of the Sants. Following a daily meditation schedule, this is by Baba Ram Singh. If we set a fixed time for our meditation, and we also set a fixed place for sitting for that meditation, then the mind also gets used to it. If we keep changing the time of our meditation or keep changing the place of our meditation, then that gives an opportunity for the mind to also create havoc with us. And then the mind also reminds us of so many other things that have to be done. And that way it keeps disturbing us. So if it is used to sitting at a fixed time, it realizes that, yes, this is the time for meditation. And then it leaves us alone for that time. Baba Ram Singh, with some guidance about consistent daily, regular meditation practice. This is also from a satsang discourse by Baba Ram Singh titled, To Make the Mind Our Friend, We Have to Do As Much Simran As Possible. Simran means remembrance. The Sufis call z remembrance zikr. Um, mystics have the prayer of the name the repetition of sacred names of God as a way to refocus, to recenter, to begin the meditation process. And of course, Simran can be done not only during meditation to start off one's meditation, but we can take Simran breaks throughout the day to spiritualize, to recenter throughout the day as we will need to be doing.
and all with shall need to, to do. Simran is a great tool for that. Paltu Sahib says in his Bani or Hem, a lot of people talk about Nam, but very few people really know about Nam. Then he continues in the Bani and says, only a true master tells us about the Nam. Baba Ram Singh, true Nam is that unspoken language or Shabad, which we get connected to at the time of our initiation. The Nam or Shabad is what the true masters give us, which resonates at the back of the eye center. That is beyond description and that will not end like other mantras. That Shabad has come from Sat Nam and is resonating at the back of the eye center at the tenth door. And that is what illuminates and gives energy to the body. That Shabad is called Nam by the masters. So during initiation, when the masters give us five names to be repeated, those names are also descriptive. Those names are the names of the lords of the plains above, but nevertheless, they are letters and descriptive. They also come to an end. But these letters, these names, the five names that are given during initiation, there is a lot of charging behind these names because of the masters. And that is why there is a lot of power in this nam. These five names are given to us so that we can collect our scattered thoughts and attention, which are outwardly focused now. And by doing the Simran and contemplation of the Master within, we are able to assimilate all our thoughts in the mind at the back of the eye center. So when we focus our attention within at the back of the eye center with the help of these five names and the contemplation of the Master, and we come above and leave all the other nine doors and come to the tenth. Then the master manifests himself there. And with his grace, the Shabbat, or the sound current, manifests. So the chorus of these five holy names that are given to us to be repeated gets completed, and then the soul gets connected to the sound current, or the Shabbat, which is resonating above. And then, through this connection, the soul goes upward, the whole breadth of worlds within to God Almighty, to Sach Khand, is traversed through Shabad, through the sound current. So, it is through that Shabad only that the soul has come down, and it is only on that Shabad that the soul will rise and go back to Sach Khand. So, as the soul connects to the Shabad, it starts progressing within, and then it leaves its astral form. It goes into the causal, and then from the causal it goes beyond. Both the soul and the master take the form of the Shabad within. And then on the Shabad, the soul progresses further and goes up. To do this, we have to get the grace of the masters. And we get the grace of the masters by doing more and more Simran, and bhajan, or sound meditation. And with that, the help of the satsang, uh, and with that, and the help of the satsang, that the masters give out in the outward form, we are able to progress within and get his grace. As the karmas reduce or get redeemed, the mind becomes purer, and we are able to then progress and go within. So there is more and more need of doing Simran and Bhajan to see all the things within. We have to do as much Simran and Bhajan as possible. So the time is good and the environment and ambience is quiet. We should make the most of this time and close our eyes and sit for our Simran and Dhyan or meditation. Baba Ram Singh Ji Thanks for joining me today for this Sant Mat Satsang podcast edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. My website is spiritualawakeningradio.com. 
At the top, you'll see a number of tabs. One of them is a tab called Sant Mod. If you click on that, you'll have a whole introduction, a whole page dedicated to presenting the various teachings of Sant Mod, my Sant Mod introductory page at my website, the Sant Mod tab at spiritualawakeningradio.com. To conclude today's program, a couple of Kabir poems. This is once again from the Andrew Harvey book, Engoldment. From one supreme soul, countless others, all of them merge back into the one they came from. What's so strange about this that no one gets it? What's so strange about this that no one gets it? And from the book Songs of Kabir, how could the love between thee and me sever? As the leaf of the lotus abides on the water, so thou art my lord and I am thy servant. As the night bird chalker gazes all night at the moon, so thou art my lord and I am thy servant. From the beginning until the ending of time there is love between thee and me. And how shall such love be extinguished? Kabir says, as the river enters into the ocean, so my heart touches thee. <laughs> 